these things are more structured, right? You have certain spells that you can only get when you're a certain level, and you kind of just gives a little structure to it, right? Like you want you want a game to have a lot of structure and have a way to do things, but you don't want to be stuck to it. But at the same time, if you have these systems where it's just like points, and after killing a number of bad guys, you get experience, you can kind of spend these points on making your character stronger in different ways. That seems cool in kind of a video game way, but when I've tried that with role-playing games, it's just too all over the place. It's like very, very hard to implement. And you get into power gaming, you know, people try to like get really awesome in one way and then that's supposed to just, you know, kick everyone's ass. And it's just, I don't know, that might be awesome. I think the hero system, which is another book I have somewhere, that can do that. But um, they try to counteract it with like disadvantages, like whatever your character is like an alcoholic or semi-psycho or some stupid crap. But those disadvantages never really make a difference, right, compared to some crazy-ass power you get as an advantage. So it's just kind of like a cop-out. So I don't know. I mean, it's all over the place. Who knows? Maybe AD&D had a better structure than this with the charts. I don't know. But I like this because it simplified things. And maybe because I already knew all the AD&D stuff, I kind of played AD&D within the Palladium game rule. So don't take this as a world building, right? Take this as a basic system to get your stats down. The other thing that pisses me off about all these systems, right, this is huge, right? Despite the fact that agility and athleticness should be way more powerful than they give credit for. Like, like if you look at a character like Conan the Barbarian in the novels, right, nobody could hit him. He was so, he was like a lion. He was, he was lean and mean, right, but he was so fast that even, like, really, really powerful enemies would have trouble getting a chop in on him, right? And he would just dodge that and then counter chop him and bam, he'd have no armor on, right? He's wearing, like, you know, bearskin shorts. That's more what I'm talking about with this kind of stuff. And, like, when you get these characters that are armored up with plate mail and chain mail and all this stuff, that has to have something that takes away your athleticness. Because you're carrying, you know, I don't know how many pounds that is, right? Like chain mail is like 20 pounds. Plate mail is God knows how many pounds, 60 pounds. That's going to destroy your speed and destroy athleticness. So, yeah, you have something metal. It's like a metal wall between you and whatever's hitting you. So, great. You're going to have – see, I think the concept that gets mi mixed in D&D &D heavily and even in Palladium is the whole – Hitting like, like hitting you is one thing, and then hurting you with the hit is another, right? Because an armored foe, your sword's going to bounce right off him, right? But he might be easy to hit, especially if you're a fast little bugger, right? So they need to kind of separate that out. And I think other games came in with something called damage reduction. Like some of the video games came up with that, and that's a brilliant idea because it's like, yeah, you hit him, but maybe that guy has like a rock, you know, scales that are really tough metallic like scales some monster has or a tough skin or something like he's like a bear with a big thick you know mats of fur and then tough ass skin under there that's like you know leather that you know even a sword or an axe isn't just going to fly through that it's going to like kind of chop into it and lose its momentum so it reduces the power now someone that's super powerful like a mega you know power lifter yeah it's still going to chop through because he has so much force behind it so those things you know something to think about right and the other thing I wanted to throw in there that I was really trying to say that I kind of got sidetracked with the hit versus armor toughness is, um, uh, oh my God, don't let me lose it. Um, the, uh, 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 what was I going to say? Total brain fart, sorry. So you have like how hard it is to hit someone. So I think the agility stuff should be maxed out. And um, you need to split out how hard it is to hit someone versus how much damage reduction they have by having a tough skin or being a solid substance or having plate mail on them. And then your plate mail or armor stuff, that's great. You know, you can tank yourself up, but then you're not going to have speed. Don't expect to be able to, like, run around, you know, super fast when you're carrying, like, 80 pounds of stuff or, or be able to, you know, dodge and swing away from somebody when you have all this metal shit all over you. Come on, you know. And then I watched some of these medieval fighting videos and, like, pole arms are like so kick-ass compared to a sword in real life like a pole axe is like a dominating weapon compared to a sword because you can hit with both ends of it so if you're trying to use a pole axe well it's pretty badass and you never know that and a glaive is another whole thing that's like a basically a sword stuck on a spear shaft that's half length that's a kick-ass weapon too so there's a lot of fun stuff you can do um what was i going to say about this game um as far as uh 
Oh man, what was that thing I was going to bring up about AD and D versus Palladium? They both. Um, oh yeah, it's order of magnitude, right? That's what it was. Order of magnitude. So they have these monster manuals where, like, a dinosaur will do. Let's just say it's like twice as much as like a big sword will do, right? But that's not true. A dinosaur is something like you know fifty times as strong as a human, like a big ass muscular. I don't know what the hell dinosaurs. There's like, you know, a T-Rex, but whatever the one is that's sort of like more like a giant alligator with spines on his back, the something saurus, um, that thing, you know, weighs a number of tons, right? So if that thing hits you with its big spiked tail, swings around and hits you, that's not going to be the same as your buddy hitting you with a mace, right? That's going to be like an order of magnitude. Like we're talking three, four, five, ten, fifteen 10, 15 times as much damage, right? That's going to smush you. It's going to pop you like a cockroach. So these abilities have to have a linear thing, right? And the way I'd kind of take care of that, and I haven't game tested this stuff a lot, but I've done it, and it's you know it's worked fairly well, is that you have kind of like what the average human ability is and whatever that area is. And we're talking like an average, not very athletic human, right? Then you have like a... Um, you know, one of the characters someone's going to play, and that's going to be kind of like, you know, not just an athletic human, but more like an Olympic, Olympic athlete versus, you know, almost like, you know, superhuman level, like super minor league superhero level abilities in these things. Because you don't want a guy that's going to go up against all kinds of terrifying monsters and, or a gal that's going to go up against all kinds of terrifying monsters and just get killed like, oops, that's the end of the B movie, right? You want someone that's going to like, take a lick and it keeps on ticking and, you know, kills multiple enemies. And, you know, something you want to see in a movie, right, where the ninja kills, you know, five or six people in a row. That's the kind of person you want to play for a little excitement, right? You don't want to play someone that's like, you know, yourself. And, uh, well, I shouldn't speak for you, uh, you know, super steroided, super athletes out there. But um, I myself am uh, not in very good shape right now because of uh, various reasons. But I'm getting better. Don't worry about that. It's all coming. It's all coming. I have friends that are helping me out and, you know, no longer trying the crazy vegan stuff with Durian Rider. So we'll get to Durian Rider in another video. Good guy. Um, so, uh, so like, you know, naturally the, uh, the dungeon master, the, whoever, the judge, whatever you want to call, doesn't want to put you up against, you know, super dragon monsters that you can't beat, you know but they don't want to have you fighting, you know, idiots either. So it's going to be a combination, right? There's going to be a balance there. That's that's where the art of the game comes in. It's kind of like a James Bond movie. He's not going to fight 50 guys one-on-one -on -one and beat them all, right? That's like, you know, not realistic. He's not going to fight a guy that's, you know, it's not going to be like Kirk fighting Khan, where Khan's like five times the strength, right? That's like not really a, you're going to have, have to get lucky. You're going to have to have magic or you're going to have to have, you know, your God is going to have to have some favor that you call in or you're going to have to have a little funny stuff or you're going to have to have the Kung Fu, right? Or something where you use his strength against him. So the strength is nullified by skill, all kinds of stuff there. Right. Um, so to review this system, let me just take a quick look here. Cause I haven't really played this in a while, but if we take a look, um, you know, you got different races and stuff. I, I love all kinds of different races, but I don't get too hung up on the book saying that this race is this much faster or slower. The, I kind of like the Warhammer look on dwarves, where dwarves are, like, not that tall, but they're, like, twice as wide as humans, so they're, like, mega strong and tough, and they're kind of, you know, whatever, grumpy and whatever. I kind of like that kind of thing with dwarf instead of just a little guy. Or, like, the Terry Pratchett version of a dwarf. The dwarves are, like, little guys, but they're, like, superhuman, you know, superhumanly strong for their size. They're like probably like, you know, twice as strong as a human, even though they're a little guy, because they're underneath the ground mining since they're like age zero, right? And they have to fight trolls and all kinds of whatever is down in the under, under, you know, under the underground realms. They got to fight all that stuff. So they're mega tough, right? They don't mess around. And they're used to doing like, you know, mining 18 hours a day for like, you know, years on end since they're like age three. So, um, you got a great psionics. They call it a mind mage in Palladium. That's like kick ass. You've got a summoner, you've got a diabolist, you've got witches and stuff, warlocks that um, make packs with things. Um, the dodge is something that DD and D doesn't have much of, right? In this game, you can just decide, I'm out. Like someone swings something at you and you just dodge, right? 
and that's awesome. I also think that um, a shield should be a much, much more powerful um, artifact than they give credit for in most video games or D&D. Because if you have a shield that's made of metal, that's a tremendous defensive advantage. And it should almost like you get, you should almost get an attack to try to block their crap with the shield. It should give you, it should be like having another weapon in your hand, right? And if you block it, then the shield has damage absorption of like a lot, like because it'll pretty much block anything. Now you might get a sprained forearm or shoulder if they hit you with something really mean, but if it's just a sword or something glancing off of there, forget it, right? That's like not even going to bother you. And um, but at the same time, then you have a lot of people who want to use two weapons, a weapon in each hand, and that's really tricky, right? Because you can throw yourself off balance trying to use a second weapon rather than focusing on you know using one really well. We're using it with two hands, and so that gets in all kinds of fun stuff, right? And so I say, feel free to modify the rules, but um, do it as you go along. And if you need to change something, just say, okay, that I think that's a, you know a better way to do it. We're going to handle it like that from going on. Just build your own little rule book, right? This isn't like the Bible, right? It's not set. You don't have to follow everything. You can. This is a starting point, and it's supposed to. Oh, here's some other good pencil drawings. Holy mackerel, these are some good ones. Um, you know, got some kind of little demony guys here, and there's somebody down the bottom there. Show that. Hopefully that can. A little guy down here too. That's some kind of Pazuzu like locust demon guy. And um, so you've got the spells, you got the monsters, um, you got fairy folk, which is a whole other thing. And I, I don't even think Palladium kind of fleshes that out. I think the whole English fairy folk thing is a huge thing. They're immortal, right? So they play with mortals and stuff. They might help you. They might trap you underneath somewhere and leave you there to starve, right, and come back and play with you later. They're, they're kind of like part of their deal is they don't have morals like we have because they're immortal. They're not human, right? And it's interesting to see how the stories and movies cover that. Like one thing is that they don't have our morals, right? So what we think is good or bad or hurting someone or bad, they just don't get that. It's like not in there. They just want to kind of have fun and mess around, but them messing around might trap you in some room for like 50 years and they don't get or care that like, you know, you're mortal and you're going to be dead or whatever or old, right? They just play around with things. And like they have magic that's like very, tangential they have like mounds and that's you know that's all kinds of english folklore stuff that's not really covered they have some in here and they're kind of cool you know they have like they're mostly considered like little beneficial people and i i, I like a little bit in the um dying earth where they have the little quick man who rides a dragonfly like a horse and he can give you information because he's seen other stuff out in the forest that's kind of cool i think english you know kind of fairies can be either bad or good they kind of carry, you know, have a bunch of that stuff in here. I don't, I don't know where I'm going with this really, but suffice to say that like they can be a mean adversary or something that can help you or hurt your enemies. If your enemies come into their area looking for you, that can be kind of a cool thing that you know is rarely covered in film. Like you, you have kind of like a leprechaun is kind of a bad guy. One movie, or you have. Um, Ah, all right, let's get past that. I thought I had some awesome ideas on that front, but it's like, whatever, right? Another interesting thing you don't cover much. So then you have, you know, some pretty sweet dragon action there. Um, I mean, dragons are, like, so powerful that I don't even, like, worry about them too much. Some of the things in some games, they have them be super intelligent, which is kind of cool. And... Um, they could be used to send you on a quest to do something, right? Not just come and kill them and who knows, maybe they can be used to help you. And Because in some books and stuff, dragons are quite intelligent, which is kind of different from a lot of portrayals. Like um, some, one story I saw was like a dragon that transformed himself into a human temporarily to go do something or, I don't know, maybe they were into some girl and they wanted to pursue her as a human or some crazy shit. So, Elementals, you've got warlocks, you've got all kinds of spells. Um, 
not a lot of world building, but stay away from the world building in Palladium. And I don't like their later books. I don't like. I don't know what it is. It's just 